Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, hello, hail and welcome back everyone to... uh... Another episode of Random Heathen Ramblings. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today, watching today, participating in this uh, this premiere. If you're catching it live on the YouTube uh, channel, on the YouTube premiere, um, hail and welcome to everybody. A special hail and thank you to my channel members and patrons on Patreon. I greatly appreciate you guys' continued support um, on that level and to everybody else that's just continuing to stream, listen, watch, upload, download share comment subscribe the whole deal it means great deal to me and i want to say thank you so hail and welcome to everybody i hope you have been having i guess a a great week thus far um we are uh, fast approaching the uh spring equinox time here in north america you know uh, at least in the united states of america uh weather is beginning to feel much more like the springtime much unlike the um audacity <laughs> of Scotty last uh this this past weekend man uh like a week ago or almost a week ago uh like Friday night going into Saturday where we you know went from like 70 degrees during the day and it like just took a barrel roll downhill into the into the 20s and the teens overnight we got a little bit of snow and it stayed on the ground you know for like a for for the for a good portion of that day um but we're past that now, so it seems. Um, and we are feeling much more like, you know, the springtime would be. I'm going to have to start cutting my grass again soon. And everybody else's grass. I, I cut my um, my in-laws live a few doors down. And my wife's cousin lives next to them. So I cut my yard, you know, or our yard, and I cut theirs and her cousin's yard. So here we go. I'm going to be starting to do that again. And um, what is going on with this here? But anyway, um, yeah, we're doing that. That's going to be coming up soon. You know, the way the I'm trying to get this lighting, lighting right, washed out over here. Oh, well, it is what it is. But that's going to be happening soon probably very soon if not already by now I'll, I'll have gone out there and you know i think my father-in-law already started some spring cleanup around his his yard he, he was getting the itch you know to get out there with the the trimmer or what they call it down here in the south is the weed eater weed eater they call it a weed eater back up north where i'm from we used to just call it a weed whacker which uh you would whack more than just weeds with it i mean i i had a I had a Honda professional grade, commercial grade, I think it was called. Sucker weighed like 18 pounds. It was a heavy. It was heavy. Um, but I had this like shoulder harness thing, you know, and I would it would clip to, to the shoulder harness and I would I would, you know, my dad had a uh about a seven, seven or eight thousand dollar 
zero turn radius lawnmower, man. Big 60 inch wide mother. It was called the grasshopper. I think that was actually the brand. It was a grasshopper. And, um, you know, because we had, you know, several acres of, of yard to, to cut. I think all total, my parents' property was, uh, you know, about two or three acres of, of grass, maybe more, something like that. It was, it was, it was a lot. I know that. And then uh, people on our same road had, you know, homes and businesses and stuff like that. And they would, uh, you know, we, we, they, they would charge us to, to mow their yard. So between my dad and I, and then eventually it just became me where I was, you know, I was the lawn guy. I was the long guy from Long Island. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but I am actually from Long Island. So I was I was the lawn guy from Long Island. And I would go out there with my lawn mower and my weed whacker, and I would trim the yards. And I would, you know, do all of that stuff. So anyway, um, I... Uh, weed whackers or weed eaters or whatever they call it down here. Um, my my father-in-law was out there trimming around some, uh, some stuff and just getting things cleaned up. And I was like, ah, I'm looking around my yard too. And I'm like, eh, it's going to be that time. It's going to be that time. So, you know, it's good. It's good that, uh, you know, life is starting to resurface. Things are starting to become much more awake and active. The days are pretty, the days are now longer. You know, we just had that stupid daylight savings time thing kick in, you know, so now we got, you know, we lost an hour of sleep that one night and now we're back into the, uh, uh, you know, extra hour of daylight. So, you know, our days feel longer now. And uh, just overall, generally, generally speaking, you know, we're, we're, we're moving towards the, the return of life and the return of the sun and, re and return of all these things so, you know the spring equinox there's ostara for a lot of the other pagans that observe as as such um and of course you know easter <laughs> oddly enough easter um this year is falling on the same weekend as uh, my tribe's uh Sigurd bloat uh celebration so we've got to we got to make accommodations to uh, be back from our camping trip where we are going to be doing our thing. Uh, we're going to have to be careful to uh, be back in time to to attend family functions and, and things of, of 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 the Easter side of stuff. So there will be that. Um, and this uh, this whole screen thing is like it's weird today. It's it's it seems to be like really. I don't know if it's the, is it the lighting? See, that makes me look like I'm freaking ghost face over here. Anyway, I'm not going to stress about it too much. You guys get it. I'm not worried about the visual aspects of it because it's a podcast and who cares what's up here on this, you know, screen thing, whatever. But, um, so yeah, we got, uh, we got all this, all this newness, all this new life coming around, and with the newness of life, with the resurrection of life, with the with the resurfacing of, of things, you know, everything's waking back up again from its dormant stage. We're starting to see some some intense intensity returning to this uh, to this part of the world, you know. A lot of intense emotions, a lot of intense feelings, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of strength, a lot of power. Uh, making themselves manifest um, in a lot of people's lives. Um, it's 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 a it's a it's palpable. I can feel it. I can, you know, we a lot of us can feel it. Um, but an interesting show today. I thought I was going to have a um, a guest on here. As it turns out, um, doesn't doesn't uh, look like that's going to work out. But that's okay um things happen you know life happens man uh we had a plan i think i talked about last week we had a plan last uh this past saturday you know to to meet up with some people and um you know uh, talk about some things and have lunch and whatnot and you know largely due to other things but you know the weather maybe played a little bit of a factor but there were some other major things going on on my end where i just i could not rightfully justify taking off and, and spending time with people that I've either never met before or, you know, only met once. 
Um, couldn't justify going off to do that without first taking care of things within my inner yard, my inner uh, Inan guard. Talked about that a number of times on a number of videos. And the, the concept of inner versus outer is very, is very commonplace in, in, in a heathen worldview. But um, the inner is, is sacred. And uh, we, we, we take care of what's in um, and guard that which is within before we worry about what's without. So uh, most of my focus uh, had, had been over this weekend, you know, been, been on uh, things going on here uh, with my inner yard. So we didn't do our, our visit, our luncheon thing. Um, it has been rescheduled, though, to this coming Saturday. So um, we shall hopefully get a chance to, to meet some folks and be reintroduced with some folks and have some uh, interesting conversation and see where it goes from there. But uh, I did want to still keep up with what I wanted to talk about this week. So last week I mentioned some things about, um, you know, uh, families or, or, or whatever of, of differing faiths or families of opposing beliefs, or um, you guys can check my back catalog in, in previous episode for that. Um, and actually during the YouTube premiere last week's live premiere, I got a call in from a gentleman and we're going to listen to his, his call here. Um, because it has to do with what we talked about last week. And I think he brings up some really great points. And that's what I love about sharing, you know, this type of stuff on whether it's YouTube or, or any other platforms. You guys are always welcome to call the Midgard Musings hotline, 615-671-9832. I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning where you are or whenever, just call in and leave a voicemail because just like this guy did, you know, it was happening during the premiere. I'm not going to, you know, I don't have it set up to where I'm going to take calls live or, or whatever, because I, I, I record these episodes well enough in advance, days in advance, um, even um, for, uh, you know, uh, to schedule the premieres and stuff. So, but please, when you, when you listen, when you watch, when you uh, see any of this stuff and you, and you, even if it's a past episode, right, just call in. Hey, Jesse, you know, that, that one episode where we talked about this, it was episode number blah, 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 or whatever. You know, you, you mentioned this. I want to talk about that. And here's my thoughts on it. It doesn't matter. It was whenever it was, whenever it is. If you go back and you listen to a bunch of my episodes and, you, and you're like, I think this would be a really neat topic of conversation. It, what, how, how do I get on your podcast? You can call me or you can write into the show, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. Uh, especially if you're interested in being a, a guest on the podcast um, would love to, you know, hash out some details and, and, and talk about some things as far as that goes, but yes, please definitely make sure um, that anything that you have thoughts wise um, share it, you know, so let's, let's listen to um, let's listen to this call um, because it really did speak to me. I think it, it did, a, it did a great uh it did a great thing um, for, for, for the issue at hand. So this is uh, a call from, I think it says Emmanuel or Manuel. Uh, either way, um, Manuel or Emmanuel, um, thanks for, for calling. And so let's listen to, to what, what he has to say here. Hey, Jesse. This is Emmanuel Freyer. I'm Emmanuel listening Freyer. to your premiere awesome now. Name. And um, just a bit ago, they were talking about um, being heathen within a Christian home. And I just thought of uh, this other aspect in, in my life personally that helped me. Um, as, as far as a Christian family, my family was very accepting and loving and I didn't have an issue with that. The biggest issue I felt like is probably a big problem for most of our people is is dating and when you get into dating a christian or a baptist or a jehovah's witness like i married and you know wow. when uh, my past relationships when i was first starting to get into the faith you know i was really gung-ho about everything and i was a lot of us know, were screaming to the skies that that i praised thor and um it like pushed my ex away from me 
So oh, no. in this relationship, which I'm now married, instead of inviting her to the bloats, instead of inviting her for ritual and doing uh, cleansings or meditations, instead of going to the cemetery for ancestor veneration, instead of doing any of that, I went out and I did my own thing. I would do a bonfire in my backyard and I would I would hold the bloat. You know, I would go to my altar and, you know, I would say a little prayer, burn my herbs and I would just uh, leave it at that. I wouldn't invite them. If they came up to me and my, the kids came up to me and they asked, you know, I would tell them. If my wife came up to me and asked, I would tell her. And, you know, eventually, I want to say, you know, it only took like six months for her to continuously ask me questions. Like, it, it let her... Um, let her guard down and say, okay, well, let me figure out what end he's coming from. Mm. And at the end of it, she became a part of my kindred. You know, she became a pagan. Wow. And I think our approach should just be the opposite of what, like, Jehovah's Witnesses do, going door to door and trying to jam our religion down people's throats. And people seem to be more accepting to that. Um, hmm. That's awesome, dude. Anyway, I would love to be on one of your shows sometimes, man. I I really enjoy. Oh man, so the, I guess the call cut off because that's all I've got. But man, like, I I I one hundred percent agree with you, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Frere. Um, so hail to you wherever you wherever you called in from. I I, I genuinely want to say thank you um and i hope that this reaches your ears um and eyes and and whatever but thank you for calling in because you know you bring up some really good move my headset over there you bring up some really good points you know let things be organic and let things grow as as they were you know you had an experience when you first got into a relationship with someone who was perhaps not lined up with your beliefs you know and you took a very aggressive approach right with the you know hailing of the gods and being very you know there's nothing wrong i don't think there's anything wrong with with um being transparent and and expressing your dedication to the gods in that way there's also opportunity to understand that because of its because of it all right like there's there's opportunity there to learn of of respecting and 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 showing some temperance and and dialing it back a little bit for the very reasons that you mentioned right that first time didn't work well it actually pushed your person who that you were in the relationship with away from even wanting to perhaps think about it now it could be said that that individual was not any in or in any sense of the word interested in wanting to learn about you know heathen heathenry or or paganism or anything like that and so it really wouldn't have mattered what you did or what approach you took if she was not willing or wanting to to be a part of it then there was really nothing that you could do to persuade her but that that's where it goes back to right like your wife now who you entered into a relationship with while she was jehovah's witness is now pagan, right? Your approach was not to persuade. Your approach was, I'm going to do my thing and you're going to do your thing. And we're going to live together peacefully, but I'm going to, I'm going to respect your path and your religious and your uh, religious ways and your spirituality. I'm going to respect that. And you, and in turn, I ask that you respect mine. And it seems right. Just without knowing too much about your situation, but it seems like that's how the relationship was, uh, was, was, was was experienced you know you guys respected each other and you went outside and you did your thing kind of away from everybody right like it wasn't like you just lit a fire right outside of the back patio and and you know started drumming and dancing and and hail the gods and everything like that right it was set off a bit set and wait in a sacred space and you you did your thing and and you made it open and available right you were it wasn't like don't come out and bother me 
Um, but you also weren't like, I want you to come out here and experience this. You have to come out here and experience this. This is our family. This is part of it. Yada, yada, yada. Right. No, instead you, you, you did your thing and you left it open. Like, let them come to me, let it grow organically, let it do what it's going to do in whichever way it's going to grow. Let whatever to be will be. Okay. And I love that. I love to hear that. And then look what happened, right? It's, it's, it, is it going to happen that way every single time with, uh, with families or, or with people that have relationships? I, I guess not, you know what I'm saying? But if there's a chance of it to happen, if there's a possibility, and, and if you want to give it the best chance that it has, I think your approach is 100% the way to go, right? Because you didn't force anything upon anybody. And you answered questions when they came to you about it and you allowed them to approach you. And then that, what happened, you know, they became so inquisitive and so curious that they found a place to call home with their own spirituality. They realized or they found that what you were doing felt more like a place that they wanted to be over something that they had been doing, you know, so there was like a call home and, and they felt invited and yes, I 100% agree that, there, that the, the approach that, that heathens should take nowadays and pagans in, in, in general should take nowadays is if you're going to enter into a relationship with a partner um, of whatever sort, whatever kind of romantic um, or, or whatever relationship that you enter into, it should be known and it should be, you know, there's, there should be that level of transparency that this is who I am and this is what I am and this is what that means. Um, but, that, but that if they aren't the same thing as you at that time, um, that it should not necessarily, you know, dissuade you from pursuing a relationship with that person. And if they are willing to give your relationship a shot, knowing the challenges that are faced or, or knowing the challenges ahead that you may face. Okay. Because again, a lot of, especially Christians are, are, are fed the, the, the dogma um, and the doctrine of the Abrahamic God that that pagans equaled the devil and, and heathens are the bad guys. And those are the ones that should be wiped out and eradicated and, and cleansed or, or converted, you know, um, or, or, or have had nothing to do with, you know, they don't have anything to do with the filthy pagans. Uh, we read about it all the time. If, if anybody has ever taken any time to read through Old Testament um, writings, whether and whatever variation of the Bible you want to read from. But I, I know a lot of our audience is, is going to be, you know, pagans that were Christian. So you've re at least read the Bible or heard things about just the general overall <laughs> view of, of pagans amongst Christians. It's that, you know, no bueno. So if you go into a relationship with somebody who is obviously Christian, and dedicated in their Christian faith, you love them for who they are. You don't love them for the religion that they that they follow. There are just some things that just inherently don't match up. And as long as there's an understanding and, and, and a mutual respect for each other, like, hey, I'm going to do my thing and you're going to do your thing, you, you might be able to make it work. Again, for Manuel's case here, um, in his, you know, uh, scenario that he presented, it obviously has worked out because now his his wife does share uh, similar or, or same beliefs and is no longer Jehovah's Witness and is pagan, you know, and it wasn't that he was trying to convert her or, or change her from who she was. It was he just did what he did and allowed it to be an open and welcoming thing. And she was inquisitive and she asked questions. And now after so many questions were asked and, and whatnot has become part of it all. So there's that chance that it could happen, but it needs to happen organically, right, guys? It needs to be something that plays out naturally and organically. We don't take the approach of, if you want to be with me, you have to be pagan, right? If you want to be with me, you have to worship the old gods. You have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Um, uh, and again, like I said, if, if, if that's your approach and if that's the way you're going to conduct your life, that's that's your hall and your call. Don't don't misconstrue what I'm saying as being like, you know, it ain't going to work unless you do it this way or the other. I mean, again, your hall, your call. But I 100 percent agree, you know, with you, Emmanuel, 
that you uh, you should just do the thing. And and if they want to be a part of it, then 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 let them be a part of it. And and if they don't, then they don't. And that's OK. So. I really appreciate that. I, I really appreciate you calling in and, and sharing that bit of information that, that and being, you know, that candid with not just me here, but now with everybody, you know, um, and, and definitely, you know, man, I think that um, if you, if you want to ever write in uh, Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com about a possibility of kind of being on a podcast with me to talk about stuff. And um, again, I, I welcome it. Um, yeah, I welcome it to everybody and anybody uh, at least to write in and inquire about it. So um, yeah, for sure. It's, it's the, the invite's still there and, it, and it's open. But um, for anybody that does call in, just realize that if I, that I, if I, if I get your voicemail, I'm like, man, this would be great on a podcast that I'm going to put it out here. Um, and uh, if you don't want to be on the podcast and just let me know ahead of time. Like, Hey, this is something I want you to consider. I want to remain anonymous. Um, that sort of thing. So it's there, it's out there. It's, it's, it's for you all. Um, <clears throat> but okay. So, so now that we did that, I think that was a great, you know, introduction, uh, for this week's, um, podcast. I did want to do, as I said, I would do, um, last week and, and start this week off with, um, another viewer, uh, request or another listener request um, that came in the form of an email. So this uh, this one is coming in from uh, someone who I'm going to be linking. He's got a YouTube channel. He's also on Instagram. Not very active, according to him. Doesn't post a lot of content, but I'm going to put it down there anyway. So you know, check him out. Uh, he is uh, Skaldic Skaldic Works. So it's um, Skaldic works on YouTube and Skaldic underscore works on Instagram. Information is going to be in the description and also in the show notes of the podcast. So if you're looking to, you know, follow what uh, what he does, um, those are the platforms that he's offered. And he did say, you know, you know, feel free to um, share his um, his his social media information. He doesn't post a lot there, um, but uh, he did say, you know, had two questions. For you, so the the um the 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 this this podcast is going to be dedicated to the first of two questions. He has two questions, and his email was titled "Destroying Altar Objects and Interrupted Ritual Spaces." So it's a two part. Now, part two is going to be on next week's episode. So if you guys want to um, continue and see what we talk about with relation to the second part of Scald at Works question, tune in to next week's episode. Um, but his email says he goes by uh, Blake. His name is Blake, and he goes by Scald at Works on YouTube and, and Scald at underscore Works on Instagram. Again, it's all in the description, show notes, whatever. Check it all out. Um, he says he doesn't post there a lot. But anyway, he says he has two questions to ask, and he says I can answer them both in one podcast or – uh, split them into two topics. I like the two topics thing because again, of what we had to do on the first half of the podcast or the, or the first part of this of this week's podcast. And I, I just think that these two topics are, they tie into one another well enough. So you could technically fit them into one, but I feel like with, uh, with more people involved, hopefully next week I'll have a guest. We can talk more about this and, and, and get some more dialogue built around. So his first question that we're going to be talking about today um, it goes in hand, he says, with what I have said about ritual objects on my altar, or he says on your altar, ritual objects on your altar that no longer have a purpose needing to be destroyed upon removal from said altar. So what I'm asking, or what he's asking is, what happens if either the object can't be destroyed and he says such as bronze statues um you want to repurpose them you know you want to like repurpose the bronze i guess you want to repurpose the item as a sacred object elsewhere or keep them and move them back into the realm of the profane world 
So the, the question I'm gathering is, is, you know, you, he's referring to, and I can't recall which video or which podcast I may have talked about this song. So I apologize for not having a point of reference for this, but I know that I've talked about this type of subject before. Um, and that is the, um, destruction of ritual items once they have served their purpose once they have um once they no longer serve the purpose for which you use them um and he's asking you know what do you do or what happens what what can you do if the ritual item can't be destroyed or you want to repurpose it um for other things so um i do just want to say that the thing of which that um Scholarly works here is, is 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 talking about can definitely be looked uh, into from a lot of different ways. There has been, and I've seen them before, historical archaeological um, digs and finds of items that were used as a uh, ritual item. We don't know necessarily what the ritual was, um, but they were re they were recovered or discovered through archaeological means. Um, as, as items that were used by an ancient society for the purpose of ritual, and they were obviously visually and, and, and everything else destroyed. Um, the most, the most um, I'm trying to think, the most uh, obvious one that I can think of is I've seen an old spearhead that dated back to like 500 BC or something. It was, it was, it was traced to like a Celtic tribe. Um, somewhere I don't remember exactly where, but it was a spearhead. Now, obviously, spears are, are straight, and obviously, you know, pointed and whatnot. And the spearhead had been burnt or melted and bent beyond, like beyond ninety degrees. It was almost like a one hundred. It was like a U at that point. They they had they had taken the the bronze or the or or, or whatever the, the the metal was that they had made and crafted the spearhead out of. It was a metal. Um, they had they had melted it to the point of of being able to to ritually destroy it. So that spear, as now being in the shape of like a U, no longer served its purpose as as anything. It, 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 you could not use it for hunting. You could not use it for for warfare, defense, anything. It was it was rendered useless in the realm of the profane. And we see this sort of practice. We see this sort of thing being done in, in a variety of cultures and in an archaeological discoveries support that this practice existed in, in, in many cultures. So I think I've talked about this thing before in, in, in other videos or podcasts um, where you craft something or you make something for the sake of a ritual, right? And it could be anything. It could be, and I'm just going to use some examples that I know of, right? I've written, I've written ritual um, I've made um, bind runes. I've I've crafted certain things, and others that I know in my tribe have have done the same thing. Uh, one of our tribe members, who's who's who serves as our law speaker, um, is is very skillful in the formation of mandalas, right? So he's got a lot of intuition and a lot of experience with putting symbols together in a very um aesthetically appealing format and he's made mandalas and stuff for certain rituals that that, that we perform um and it fits our tribal traditions it, it fits the way our tribe works um and he's made those things and then he has ritually destroyed them in in fire now <clears throat> again the reason behind it goes back to the purpose of what you do right your intent is to uh, and i've talked about this before again intent and purpose if you guys are interested in wanting to see about the differences between intent versus purpose then uh just go back through my 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 uh podcast episodes catalog and look for the episode that uh jm olifson and i did together talking about the very thing about intent and purpose but you know your intent is one thing and the purpose is the other the purpose uh, behind what you're doing is 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 to achieve uh, a certain result, right? Um, and once that purpose has been served, once you have gone through those motions, once you have done the thing, that item that you use in your ritual now has has been rendered uh, 
of no more use for you in the profane. You have, you have sent it off. You have done what you've done through your ritual. And now it needs to be released to the sacred ritually. So this, the, 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 this next part kind of goes into a lot of different, uh, I think uh, anyways, I'm not going to go on, on record as saying this, but I think the, the, the method of destroying something ritually, the three B's, right? Bury it, bog it, or burn it um, are, are utilized. Maybe not just in Germanic heathen or Norse heathen circles, but in, in a variety of other polytheistic pagan practices. You know, if you can't burn it, then bury it. And if you can't bury it, then bog it, which is kind of like burying in a way. Um, but it goes into the bog, it goes into the swamp. It's, it's water. There's water involved. It's not just burying it in dirt. Um, it goes into the, the in there, and there's this whole water, um, water carries um, things. It, it, it has a metaphysical meaning um, to it as well as the same as fire. Uh, but either way, uh, whichever way you choose to, to ritually destroy the item, it's, it is rendering it of no m more use to, to the, to the profane world. So like in, in comparison with that spear that I was referring to earlier, you know, that spear was bent beyond its, its physical use, its profane use. It can no longer serve as a weapon of war or, or, or a hunting item. Um, it was strictly used in a ritual for the gods and it was destroyed as such. And by destroying it, you are ritually, ritually uh, releasing it from its profane use and uh, sending it off to the sacred realm. So he says, you know, what, what, what's to be done about items that can't be destroyed. Now, I don't know the mechanics of things to the, to the extent of bronze. He's, he's using bronze statues as a, as a, as an example. Right. But I feel like with enough fire, with enough heat, right. With enough force, anything can be destroyed, you know, um, and, and if you want to repurpose that item for something else, then the, the item is no longer what it was. You, you've changed its structure and you've, you've, you've changed the integrity of it. You, you've made it something else other than what it was used for in that moment. And so it is not the same thing anymore. Um, so there's always a way where there's a will, there's a way you can burn something to it, to its incineration. You can, you can bury something to the point where it, it is lost to the, this profane world and, and without, you know, conscious efforts of, of, um, resurfacing it and, and retrieving it. It's, it is done. It is, it is no longer used for, um, in, here in this profane space, same way with bogging, you know, it's it's gone. It's washed away. It's it's consumed by the bog, and it's and it's made one with. Uh, uh, it, it's it's no longer part of this profane space and to be used in this profane world. You know, so. You know what 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 if or or what what if you can't destroy it? I mean, show me something that you re yeah, you really can't destroy. You know, unless we're talking about items that are so precious that and in, in, in destruction talking about diamonds or, or whatever you know where like you literally can't destroy it i mean send it off you know cast it into a lake i mean it's 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 out of your reach now right it's it's uh and that's the whole bogging thing you know um it's out of your reach now and, and good luck to ever trying to retrieve it um but fire for me has been the one that I have actually become close, most closely, you know, associated with fire and smoke. Um, me and my ritual practices, I've uh, ever since probably the last like five months or so, I, 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 I went off into a spiritual journey um, last November. I've talked about this, alluded to this a number of times. Um, with a number of guests on the show and I've talked about it, you know, pretty, pretty openly, but my, that, that shamanic journey of mine, you know, I, I spent a lot of time um, in the East, in the South, the South and the East were my places that I would um, hang out 
a bit. I'm talking like compass points, you know, points on the compass in the south and in the east. And the, the fire and the smoke are something that I'm drawn to really ever since then, honestly. Um, I've always loved a good campfire. I've always loved a good bonfire. Um, but a lot of my spiritual practices as of late, which, which for anybody that follows me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you'll see a lot of my, my, my photo posts and some of my, even my video posts might include me uh, partaking in a smoke, a smoke session of sorts, a resin burning smoke session. And it's very therapeutic. It's very helpful for me in my spirituality. It really helps me tune in um, and, and kind of get into that ritual state of mind. So fire is, is, the, is the thing that I'm always drawn to. And I'm like, if I can get somewhere, then I can burn it um, and destroy it ritually through fire, then, then that's what speaks to me. Other people might have, you know, some restrictions. Um, we are, in fact, of course, modern pagans, you know, living in modern societies and in, you know, apartments and, and, and city living and, and all that kind of stuff are not always uh, welcoming or conducive for fires to be lit. You know what I'm saying? So you might not have that ability to, to in your space, in your home, on your property, be able to do stuff like that. Fortunately, where I live, uh, while it is pretty r rural and I've got neighbors, you know, very close by, fortunately, I have the ability to have an outside area of, to, to, to burn things. Um, and I also live close to the Stones River. Um, and I have places that I venture off into off of the beaten path. Um, near the water where if I want to send things off, I've done this before ritually as well, where I, where I send things off that are not, um, first of all, they, when, I, when, I, when I send things off like that into the water or, or bog it or whatever, it's non-toxic. I don't send things out, out, off that way that, that would potentially be harmful to the environment, to the vetir, um, to anything like that. So, you know, biodegradable items, things that are of, of natural resources you know when i send things off that way it's 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 done um i've, I've done that before uh, with fire you know you can pretty well burn almost anything <laughs> that that's that's naturally occurring it's not going to hurt the environment if anything it's going to just burn it down into ashes that can be used um to to nourish uh the earth so again it it, it goes back to the whole the purpose the why why are you doing what you're doing you're you're you're, you're doing it to seal the deal, as it were, you know, your, your words that you've spoken, the, the efforts that you've made, the things that you've done um, now need to be finalized and sent off. And this item, this thing, whether it be something that you made, whether it be something that you hold near and dear or true to yourself, it's, it's something of value. You are dedicating it to the sacred. You are dedicating it to the gods and to get rid of that item, to destroy that item, to no longer have that thing be used for its purpose anymore. And, and whether it be you, you change its construction, you, you change its material makeup to be something else, that's still ritually destroying the item, you know? So sure, if you burn something down or melt something down to be something else, then it's something else at that point. It's no longer the thing that you had before or that it was intended for. Its purpose has been served in that moment, and now you have destroyed it by either rendering it useless and 100% and either incinerating it or, or bogging it or whatever you want to call it, or you've repurposed it to the point of it becoming something else. And now that new item, that new thing, the thing that has been repurposed has a new purpose. The repurpose creates a new purpose. So, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things that I feel that, that people may get um, focused on or hung up on is the mechanics of it all. What do I do when I do it? How do I do it? Right. Um, you'll know, you'll know it, it, it's going to feel right and you're going to do it uh, in sincerity. And that one, that, that's the one that I, that I don't think, I mean, if you have someone that can kind of be your guide to kind of show you to, to, to learn from, I mean, I feel like, you know, platforms like this, and, and this is just one of many guys. I mean, if you're listening and watching to Midgard Musings, I hope you're listening and watching to a lot of other really good content creator, creators that are heathen out here. Um, recently, I've been, you know, I don't 
collaborate with them a lot because they're on a different level than me. Um, but like Ocean Keltoy, Wolf the Red, those folks, tremendous influencers in the heating community, community doing wonderful things. If you could, if you could, I mean, if you haven't been following them on social media, uh, their Twitters and, 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 and their YouTube, I mean, they just raised, I think it was close to 10 grand, $10,000 for Ukraine, right? Big time stuff. I mean, put your big boy pants on and, and, and run with the bulls um, kind of stuff. You know, they have they have a, a focus and they have a, a, a reach and they have a community and they and they do great things with it. And I applaud them for that. You know, I'm not on that level. I, and, and I don't know if I ever will be because that's not my angle. That's not my approach. I 100 percent applaud and support them for it. And I think it's absolutely amazing and incredible that, you know, heathens come together to do great things like that. And I want to see that. And I, and I love seeing that. I love having the visibility to that. Um, I don't do that. It, it, that's not, <laughs> that's not my angle. Um, I'm very closed off with when it comes to the things that I do or that I share. I don't, I don't use this platform to really reach that far, at least not yet. I, again, I'm, I'm constantly growing. If I, you know, if I had to look back and see, you know, when Midgard Musing started, which actually, um, if we were to do some calculating, I think by the time this podcast airs, it's either right at or close to the four year anniversary of, of Midgard Musings as a whole, right? So Random Heathen Ramblings is a podcast that me, I do. Midgard Musings is, is, it's, is a, it's a Midgard Musings production, but my, the, the channel, everything, the, the brand, you know what I'm saying? Been around for four years. And, and I look at, you know, Guys like Ocean Keltoy and, and and Wolf the Red and even Eric Shervin. Eric Shervin just broke 3,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. Tremendous amount of good content out here online for anybody that feels like they're tied, you know, or, or closed off, or that or that their connections are, are 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 broken to the rest of the world because of where they live. There's a huge community out here that you just need to tap into, and you never know who's right in your backyard. You know, and 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 Matt Petrie, Odin's Beard, Woodworking Jam, Olufsen, Fjallvatir Workshop, um, and 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 on all the friends and associates that I've come to meet, a lot of great people out here that are doing wonderful things in their own way. And I don't want to compete with people like Ocean or or Wolf the Red. Let them do their thing and let them be good at it. That's not me. That's not what I'm trying to do. You know, let me do my thing. Let me learn. Let me let me help people and educate and 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 be a a, a source that people can you know, find a home at or, or whatever, I don't know, but whatever it is, let me be that. Um, I'm not going to try to compete with anybody else. I, I want them to, to be able to do good with what they're doing. I want Fjallvatir Workshop to do great things with all the, uh, the ritual items, the tools, the, the, the physical, tangible items that, that help us in our paganism. I want them to excel at that. I want Matt Petrie to sell all the God poles that he can possibly carve out to give people the items in their homes and in their sacred space to, to venerate the gods and to, and to focus on the gods with, you know, and I want, you know, all these others uh, that I maybe haven't mentioned, Eric Shervin, especially, man, I want, I want that man to, 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 to be able to relax, you know, and, 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 and have a, have a good time with his folk and with his family and with his kin and with his kith and, and, uh, and just, you know, put out some content i mean he does he everybody does everybody here has a place and, and they all have a a, a a lot to offer for this community you know man um and i say this community as if it's like one giant thing but there's there's little clicks and there's little subsets of of within this community that we all may find ourselves dipping in and without you know so there's there's a lot out here um if you if you're if you take the time and, and kind of siphon through the minutia, you're going to find great people and, and tie yourself to those, you know, connect with those people, learn some things. And um, I know, I know, I know that a lot of people that I'm, that I'm friends with online or, or that I'm friends with in the real, you know, commute, the real world, <laughs> you know, face to face, um, my tribesmen, my, my kin, my kith, you know, um, speak well of me and, and you know i don't i don't uh it doesn't like it doesn't always sink in 
to me, you know, like I'm at this point in my, in my journey and my heathen path right now where I'm taking a huge, it's, it's taken a turn. Um, it's taken a big turn. Um, I'm six years now going on seven years into my heathen journey, which is not a very long time. Um, but when you break it down into increments, right, and you look at nine as being largely recognized as, as a sacred number, um, you know, the nine realms, uh, Odin hangs from Yggdrasil from, for nine days and nine nights, you know, and, and, and all the various implications of, of the number nine as being something sacred, you know, I'm, I'm the threes, the six, the nine, like from my, from my first three years to my next three years, which is what I'm in right now, now transitioning from those last six, you know, the, the, the collective six years into my next three years to equal nine. These next three years for me have be, are, are going to become very, very interesting and very impactful. And I, and I don't talk a lot about my personal approach to things because it is, it is personal, but guys, if you stick around, and um, stay tuned for things. I mean, the next three years for me are going to be wild. And I will be keeping a lot of stuff close, at least initially. But eventually, things will come out. And if you stick around and you want to, you know, if, if for, for all the people that, that, that say, you man, you've been such an inspiration. You, you've taught me a lot. You've shown me a lot. This and that and the other. Thank you. First of all, thank you. But I, but I, I do. I, I, I get very... I'm humbled by it all because I'm still learning. And I mean, when you consider six years ain't a hell of a long time, man, it's really not. Um, what I've picked up, what I've learned, what I'm willing to learn and, or what I'm willing to, sh to, sh to share as far as knowledge and what I'm willing to teach. It's like, I, I'm still a student. So come along with me, right? Let's learn things together. Don't take what I say and, and have it be the, the end all be all, but take what I say and learn things yourself, right? I'm learning stuff. I'm, I'm going off and I'm finding things and I'm, and I'm taking the time to learn and read and, and live it and be it and do it. That's where I think a lot of the, 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 the growth comes from is, is, is get out of the books, right? There's a place for that. There's a time for that. And it's the time is never to stop, you know, don't ever stop searching, I, I, I think is, 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 you know, be careful with how much you learn because, you know, you know, medium wise, never too wise one should be. Um, but, uh, you know, take that experience, take whatever experience that you have um, and, and use it to, to your benefit. And then who knows where you might find yourself. You might be the one that someone comes to and says, hey, about that, what do you think? Can you help me with this? I have some ideas I need to bounce off you, whatever. Who knows? Who knows where we'll be in the next three years, guys? The world's crazy. We're all crazy for being here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, thank you, uh, Manuel, for, for calling in and sharing that. And thank you, uh, Skull It Works for writing in again, check the description and show notes for, uh, his, uh, social medias, you know, give him, give him some support. Um, even if it's just a subscribe or a follow, um, to whatever he does, but, uh, part two of Skull It Works, uh, questions. He had, he had a second question, which I'm not going to reveal today on this episode of random heathen ramblings. It will be back on next week's episode of random heathen ramblings and i will hopefully have a guest to talk about it and maybe we will revisit some of what we talked about today and hash it over again like a good old-fashioned waffle house three in the morning scattered smothered and covered hash browns baby let's get these ideas scattered smothered and covered with some get them capped if you if you will get them get them uh, get them diced Get them all over, man. Just get them, get them every which way. Get the idea, get the idea, scattered, smothered, covered, dice, chunked, you name it. So that's going to conclude today's random heathen ramblings. 
uh, podcast. I'm getting so old that all of the, the I, I keep doing this number here is because I feel like my nose is tickling. I'm getting so old that I got the the noses in my hairs, and this is TMI, but all the noses in my hairs are, are, are tickling me and making me hee hee. So I'm sniffling and I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing my nose and it's, and it's irritating. So this is, this is what you have to look forward to boys and girls. As you get older, right? You, you learn some things and then hair grows out of places that they didn't once grow out of. And it becomes really annoying. <laughs> so anyway, that being said, you all are wonderful. I appreciate your constant and ongoing support. Don't forget if you do like these episodes to support this channel and to support this podcast, give it a like, subscribe, follow, share, comment, engage. In the description and in the show notes of these podcasts, as with all podcasts, there's going to be a link tree link. If you click on it, you're going to see all of the various ways that you can support what I do here by following me on my social media, becoming a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, buying merchandise from my merch store on Spring. It's all in that link tree link. So see what fits you there. You are under no obligation whatsoever to do it, but it is appreciated if you find something there that you can monetarily uh, help support this channel and this podcast. So as always, thank you so much for all of your support. Hail to my patrons, hail to my channel members, and hail to you all. May the gods continue to walk with you, and may your ancestors always smile upon you. Until next time, take care.